on, Megan. Uh, huh? Are you kidding me? What just happened, Josh? That was just amazing. Yeah, that's the best part of basketball is uh, showing up with who you have and uh, staying together as a team and uh, pulling out a victory on the road against a really good team. Um, you know, we challenged our guys at halftime, really, to play the way we're capable of playing. And I don't think we did that in the first half. Uh, and then to hold that team to 49 points, 22 in the fourth quarter, uh, for our group to stay together through, throughout that, being down 15, I think, at one point. Um, having guys who were just a day ago in Westbury and uh, practicing, and for them to come and, and be ready to play and, and be a part of the team, and for our guys to embrace everyone, Pretty impressive uh, effort from our group. You mentioned how you hated taking the guys away from the Long Island Nets, but in this moment, you're happy that you took them away from I'm, I'm going to take Mufon out to uh, breakfast next time I see him. Uh, we, we need those two tonight. Um, and, and across the board, Jalen Wilson getting his first minutes as a, as a professional, uh, getting a block shot, uh, just being all over the place. Uh, for Armani Brooks to have the impact that he did, making shots, being in the right place defensively. And then we talked about it before the game, Trent Wofford, his ability to just make plays and be in the right place and play multiple positions, getting to the rim, being able to defend uh, Adebayo on the other end, but also push the pace and be the backup point guard. So uh, this is a night where you see the depth and the versatility of our group. And uh, I also saw the, the fight and the competitiveness from our group. Talked about just by committee, but to have 50 bench points, you know, even you know Lonnie Walker coming in as well, contributing to that group. What do you attribute that success to in that fight to, especially when you are down, and to have guys who just are constantly ready to perform and come out and show you that? Yeah, I think the beginning of the day we had some individual efforts where guys were trying to make the game go our way, but doing it on an individual basis. Uh, I think we got back to being collective in what we were trying to accomplish. The way our group is designed and the way we want to play, that anybody can fit into the system and, and uh, be able to generate movement, generate points for each other. Uh, and so overall, our pace didn't change with subbing in guys. So uh, a night where we use our depth to the, to the best of our ability. I'm just curious, one in the fourth quarter, what was there anything tactical that allowed you to kind of tighten the defensive clamps? I think it was whatever, 2 of 11 or 3 of 11. You held them from deep. Yeah, Brian, I think uh, we, we toggle back and forth between coverages to give them different looks, uh, whether that was Stan Moore attached to Hero and uh, Robinson um, catch and shoot wise to make them put it down on the bounce. I thought Ben, Doe, and Royce were unbelievable in navigating. Um, out of bio's ability to roll but their ability to switch also then royce's ability playing 39 minutes to cover up for us at the rim uh and so schematically i think we were on the same page and and, and showed how we can be disruptive on a nightly basis jack um the fourth quarter lineup almost kind of you know had to em embody this team basically put together with injuries you had trendon lonnie royce ben and armani out there i guess with that lineup, I guess, what does it say about that group who probably never played that much together to be able to not just hold it down, but play six minutes where they gave you guys the lead with a group that really had no chemistry but trusting each other, I guess. And, and that's it right there, Evan, the ability to trust uh, what we were trying to do. And, you know, we've been talking about conceptually how we want to play the game. So we pushed it with pace. Uh, different individuals were handling the basketball. We were getting to the right spacing. And just taking advantage of uh, opportunities. And I think we were selfless in our cuts, our ability to get our teammate open. We can play that way every single night if we're committed to it. And that was a six-minute stretch that we needed and uh, give those guys a lot of credit. I guess also to that, was there any planning with that lineup? Or was it just the guys you had going in right at that moment? Uh, there was, uh, you know, that group, which is interesting, one of the last scrimmages we had in preseason, I kind of mixed up the teams a little bit, and uh, Ben was leading that group uh, in one of the scrimmages. And so uh, they actually had played together in, in, in um, kind of training camp a little bit just because I wanted to mix the groups up, envision our group playing different people, different positions, and conceptually being able to handle those situations because it's not plays. Uh, you're not coming down in a half court. 
You see me two minutes ago in the game, I was still telling our guys to run. It's the best offense that we have. But I think it started tonight with our defensive uh, mindset, especially in the second half. What's up, Joe? Eric in Miami, let's yep. go. Got to make it down for this one. Um, your your guys' depth, you know, was on display through those first three games. But then tonight to have two guys in um, Trendon and um, um, Armani come in the game and really just have no fear whatsoever and come in and be aggressive and assertive. Do you, with this team, do you, first, what does that say about them? And then do you sense with this team that there's almost a different level of depth than what you're accustomed to at the NBA? Well, I think uh, when you look at like our six through you know, 15 or 18 or 15, what we have is you see a, a different level of depth. Yes, that guys that uh, you can put in on a night like this and they can contribute. That's not always uh, that, that way. You have guys at the quote unquote end of the bench uh, either developing or not ready for a game like this on the road. Armani Brooks, Jalen Wilson, uh, Trent Wofford, even Harry Giles had confidence to put him in the game if need be. Uh, those guys at the end of the bench right now have the ability to impact the game, which we uh, uh, saw tonight. So I think when you look at depth, can those dudes at the end of the bench get into a game and have an impact? And yes, with this group. Uh, two more for me from the rebounding battle. I don't know battle. I know that's something that you've been preaching this season. I believe at halftime they had their plus 10 at half, but now, right now, you are plus one. What changed when it comes to uh, attacking the glass? Yeah, that shot margin. We'll always be able to look at that, Megan. Challenged our group at halftime to come back. That uh, and, I, and I said that Doe is, Doe is playing out of position, and I challenged him, come back and help this dude. Like, he's guarding bigger dudes every night. You cannot leave him by himself. And so uh, our group took that to heart, came back, and to be plus one on a night, pretty good. And last one for me, you came in very excited after this one. I'm just curious, what was that locker room like? Because even during my walk-off interview, I had Dorian come over and congratulate Armani and T.Y. Then you had Mikhail also, even Spencer was excited. Can you take us into the locker room and what the excitement was like after this victory? Yeah, our guys were extremely excited. To, uh, you know, this is a good basketball team that was playing at full strength. And for us not to be at full strength and for us not to uh, worry about that, but to step up to the challenge is huge for this group. These are games where... You know, you can reflect back to uh, throughout the course of the year. And I think our team just acknowledged each other, uh, celebrated with one another, and uh, nothing like getting a good road win. This is another night where Mikkel kind of eased his way right into the game and takes over late and performs late. Uh, are you noticing a comfort from him in knowing when there are moments, especially... When you have a lead, I think 97 to 90, they cut it to one. Yeah. You know, and he weighs, what, like 100 and whatever. And sneaks in and gets the offensive rebound in the end one. Are you noticing him now being at ease and understanding those moments when he should be aggressive and take over? Yeah, I think they're just coming in the flow of things, Brian, uh, at the end of the day. They're not forced, not pressed. Uh, uh, and so that's progress for him and then for him to make the big play at the end whether that was uh, to get the offensive rebound score the free throw whether that was to make his consecutive free throws at the end of the game also uh, to want the ball at the end of the game so uh, I think at the end of the day for him this is uh, growing and growth for him as well a game like this can you lead your team to a win and uh, we still have some evolution in our end of game package that we got to get better at uh, but for us, from game one uh, to now game four, we've had growth as a team, and that's all I can ask for as a coach.